All right. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Happy Labor Day. <laughs> Labor Day. It's a day where we celebrate those laborers, those of us, all of us, who have spent time creating a better life and creating a better country and creating a better world, right? Um, and because we've done that, I'm hoping all of us take tomorrow and just do nothing. How does that sound, right? Just a day of nothingness. We have fabulous weather here in Minnesota, so it's going to be the perfect day to do nothing. And while we're talking about doing nothing, I have a question for you this morning. How can we rest from labor all of the time? And yet still contribute to the strength, the prosperity, the well-being of our own lives, as well as the lives of those that we love. How do we do that? Kind of an interesting question, huh? Well, Matthew had one of the answers. In the book of Matthew, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That wasn't something that your Uncle Joe said. That was something that Spirit said. So let's make it personal. Come to me with all of your cares, your burdens, your worries, your fears. That entire I have to do, should do list. All of those things you think you need to do on your own. And I, I will handle it for you so you can rest. Do we believe that? That the universe has our back to such a place that when we become clear, put it out there, it just starts to unfold. And things just tend to go a little better. It feels good to trust to that degree, doesn't it? I would like to share something that Ralph drew and uh, wrote in the tune with infinite. If one is willing to trust oneself fully to the law, the law will never fail. It is the half-hearted trustee that brings uncertainty and so unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory results. Nothing is firmer and surer than deity. It will never fail the one who throws oneself wholly on it. The secret of life, then, is to live continually in this realization. Whatever one may be doing, wherever one may be, by day and by night, both waking and sleeping. Isn't that lovely? To think that Wherever we are and whatever we're doing, the one is right there, thinking and doing with us, for us, as us, and through us. That, can you go help? That is powerful. By day and by night, awake or asleep. But here's how. It kind of goes, and, and I stole this from, I can't even remember who, I think Burns. And we have our dreams and our desires and our goals, and we set intentions, and we have this vision for our life, and we're really clear on that vision, right? We write it out, we put affirmations around it, we do our spiritual mind treatment work, we just, we are happy, because we are working with the law, and the law the law is infallible, right? It just says, yes, that's it. It's an automated system. But then it's like we write this email to the universe, right? We write this email to the universe and we say, universe, this is who I am. This is, this is my life. This is my vision. This is, this is the real me. Boy again or not, this is the real me, right? We, and we're so happy. We hit that send button and we know. We know the law knows what to do with it. We just let it go and we are so happy, right? 
we hold it close to our hearts. We share it with those people we really love and those people that we really trust. And then we start looking for a reply. But nothing comes, right? Nothing comes. So we're like, well, maybe I didn't write it strong enough. And so we take that vision, right? We, we rework that vision. We make it a little more, a little weaker, you know, not quite so grand. We kind of break it down a little bit. And, um, and we feel good about it. We send that email off again, knowing that it's an automated system. And it just says, OK, cause and effect. This is you. Let's make it happen. But then we still don't hear a reply. So I'll tell you what I start to do at that point in time, right? I start to worry that maybe I'm not good enough. And I start to fear that perhaps, perhaps this is just too big, that there's certain work I have to do on me before it can happen, right? And, and I'm, I'm like, what if it gets delivered and I can't fulfill it? or it's not what I want it to be. So what do I do? I mentally write another email saying, stop order, right? How many of you have written an email saying, stop order, right? You don't know you're writing it, but it's just like, I just got to take a break. I got to take a step back and work on myself some more before I'm deserving of this. That must be the case. And here's the thing, you guys, the universe is an automated, infallible system. So what does it say? OK. Got your order. Yeah. Yeah, got your order. And then what happens? You're working on yourself again. <laughs> and your faith is a little less because you trusted it for what you thought was a really long time. But maybe those three days just weren't enough, right? I mean, come on. It's a big order that we placed. It takes time to put it all together and to get all the wheels going. And it takes time for you to settle into it and to experience it in your, in your visions and in your dreams and in your imagination. All of that, all of that takes time. But it didn't happen three days. I'm not out of here. I'm out of here. That's how it usually works. Ernest Holmes wrote in The Power of an Idea, we must remember that very frequently it takes what we call time for events to transpire. And therefore, we should realize that the growth of thought into experience may take time to mature. When we trust in God, we will not make haste. We will not be confused. We will not contemplate the objective as our desires and believe that we have it whether we see it or not. We will know that always, by the silent process of the law, the harvest is taking form. In other words, we send the email and then we rest. We rest in our faith and in our trust and we get busy doing what's ours to do. And what's ours to do is to start being that, feeling that, acting like that. We start giving of our time and our talents and our treasures. We start working with a prayer partner or a practitioner if that little voice in the head starts up. That's what we do. Holmes in The Science of Mind writes, when we learn to trust the universe, we shall be happy, prosperous, and well. We must learn to come under divine government and accept the fact that nature's table is ever filled. Never was there a cosmic famine. God is always God. So my question to all of us is, can we really trust God enough to take a rest? to dig a on Labor Day, and to just be fully present. Charles Fillmore, um, the co-founder of Unity, wrote, 
If Jesus and his disciples and the early Christians did marvelous things through the prayer of faith, we can do likewise. All this is required, all that is required is perseverance in our own use of faith until we make a connection with the higher realm of consciousness where, as Jesus said, through our faith, be, though our faith be as small as a seed, it will spring forth and demonstrate its power to carry every desire which we infuse with it. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. If your faith is in spirit and if your work is in harmony with the divine mind. The divine mind. It's about taking a breath and resting. It's not about scurrying around, trying to get everything organized. Those ducks are never in a row. It's, it's not about rethinking. It's not about if I only had said or if I only could do or if, if only I wasn't born or whatever, right? If we just, man, if we just took a breath and remember that God's got it. God's doing all of the heavy lifting. Always, 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 always doing the heavy lifting. It is us, it is us. It is each of us who isn't willing to let go of it. It is us who, at least for me, those things that I really, really want, that's the hardest to let go of. Right? It's the hardest to let go of. But if I keep control of it, I haven't left any space for spirit to move. Because I'm so busy doing that I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to pray. Who has time to go out in nature and just enjoy? I don't, because I'm trying to get this done. But that's not how it works. It works through trust and through faith, and through taking a beat every now and then to just remember where our power is. It's not out here anywhere, it's right here. And when we need to rely on our power the most, that's when it's the most difficult, at least for me. So, the rest of this month, we are going to look at five strategies five strategies that allow us to kind of let go and let God. It's based on a book called um, The Go-Giver, and it's a, it was written as a business book slash parable way back when. But it's, uh, it's five science of mind tools. That's what we're going to look at. And all of them encourage us to rest. They all encourage us to just rest and to just be. So I want to end with a true story. And I'll, I'll tell you who wrote this, who wrote, who, where I got this. Um, Frank Arnold, Signs of the Times. He wrote it in November of 1931. OK? So, so half a century ago, a man was walking the entire, uh, walking a wire across Niagara Falls, across the entire falls, with another man on his shoulder, right? And after weeks of practice, the final moment came, the day came when they were going to make the walk. And so the rope, the rope walker said to the young cog league the following words, we are about to risk our lives I am to walk the wire. The whole responsibility is mine. You have nothing to do but match my movements. If I sway to the left, you let yourself sway with me. If I sway to the right, you do the same thing. Under no circumstance, try to save yourself, for there must be only one, only one in this adventure, and that one is me. There must be only one will in this adventure, and that will is my will. You must 
submerge yours to ensure harmony, for without perfect unison, we are both lost. There is only one thing you need to do. Sway with me. So with those final words, they started their walk. And they got closer and closer and closer to the, along, the other side. But then a long vibration of the wire broke in the center into two waves. And those two waves broke into four waves. And it was scary. Because the walker could hardly keep his feet on the rope. But they made it. They made it to the other side. And this rope walker went on to do many other great feats. But the young man who played the secondary part, he settled down into a private life, got married, and just became an active leader in a spiritual community. He was just an all-around good guy. And he often would say, I learned more religion on that wire that day than in, my, in all of my life. I learned that the only sane and safe way to live is to sway with God. Isn't that beautiful? I invite all of us to accept the invitation to lay our heavy burdens aside, allow space for spirit to dance with us, to sway with us, to really support us, because that's what it wants to do. It just wants to say, yes, my beloved. So tomorrow is a day of unlabor, so I invite all of us not only to rest, but to sway a little bit and to oh, just take in, take in the grandeur of the day, just for what it is just for that one day. I'm going to close with Meister, Meister Eckhart. He was a German mystic in the late 1200s. There is nothing, there is nothing else anyone can do that is so beautiful as to put complete trust in God. God never failed anyone who trusted him greatly, but rather by them God does great things. There is nothing we can do so beautiful as to put our own faith and trust in God, in ourselves, in that divine expression that we are. That's what ours is to do. And then just trust greatly. And let there be more than three days. You know, just let it ride. So it is. <laughs>